I was supposed to have yeah. my scenes with Orson. I would wait in one day and then two days and then three days and each time Orson would apologize and would come to the hotel and take me out for dinner and we would talk about all sorts of things but the film. So I finally I said, but what's going on, Orson? He says, well, I'm sorry, my darling, but I, we can't do our scenes yet. I don't have my makeup, my little suitcase. You know, my little suitcase with all my makeup has been lost. I said, are you sure? He says, of course I am sure. So maybe we we'll shoot tomorrow, but we'll do the shots, reverse shots on you without me. I said, well, Orson, it's quite difficult. We haven't started, and you're going to start with close-ups on me. He said, well, what can I do? You'll manage, you'll manage. Okay. So I arrived at the studio, and in one of those little boxes where they were supposed to uh, put cars, that was the makeup room. And then Orson's uh, secretary calls me because she wanted to give me some new lines. So I go into this little shabby room, and while she's fumbling amongst the papers, looking for the papers uh, Orson had left for me, I sat on the floor. There was no chair. And what did I see? Under a very old settee, Orson's makeup kit, hidden. Oh, I said, look. So she jumped around and she said, shh, don't say it, don't say it. It's been hidden for days. So in fact, as an actor, he had stage fright. And he was hiding himself. And he said that he didn't have his makeup. So finally, after two hours of shooting, I said, you know, Orson, I've discovered everything. I know where the makeup is. Oh, I said, you. So what am I going to do? You know, it takes me two hours to do my makeup. I said, we have time. Why don't you do it? And we'll do the first scene, the two of us. It's a famous scene when Dal Tersheet is jumping on the bed on top of Falstaff. So finally, we get to that scene. And we rehearse. But he was not in the on the couch. It was somebody else. And then finally, we say, shoot. And I jump on him and he screams and he says, you've destroyed my nose. Cut, cut, we can't do it today. Sometimes I try to imagine um, Orson having different bedrooms in different motels and hotels. And the doors to this room, bedroom is locked and under the bed are hidden, maybe because of the makeup kit I discovered hidden, you know, boxes and boxes of film. Who knows? And to me, Orson is so much like a destitute king. And destitute king, not because he was thrown away from the kingdom, but on this earth, the way the world is, there's no kingdom that is good enough for Orson Welles. That's the way I feel. <laughs>